All right, guys, I have another tutorial for you. This time, I'm going to show you how to animate this effect on the feathers. That looks like there's wind turbulence going through the wings and like the feathers are like fluttering. So I'm just going to show you how to do that very quickly. Now, it's not going to be an animation tutorial on like how to animate the bird. You know, I just kind of threw that together just to give us some context for like how to do the feathers. But Again, this isn't just a very simple like how to animate the feathers because you might be thinking, well, when am I ever going to animate feathers like this? But it's more about the idea of how to approach something like this. And I'll give you an example. Now, if you guys are familiar with Spyro the Reignited Trilogy, uh, there is an animation here that I, I approached the same way. So if we take a look at this. You'll see here how he's shaking. There's like this little, uh, uh, kind of the same, the same as the feathers. It's just kind of going up and down, but you can see the hands and the book are going up and down. The tail also has a little bit of like that jitter. So it's the exact same principle or effect that I use to animate something like this that we're going to use for the bird. So it's not just, you know, you're not constrained to just use this one way you can use it for many other ways but i wanted to point out too that this rig is created by tron cg artist so you guys are welcome to check out his rigs he has a lot of good stuff on gumroad that you can download or there's some that you can you know sponsor so i'm going to post a link to the rig where i got this in the description so if you guys want to follow along or do something similar you're more than welcome to find the rig here so what i'm going to do is show you the bird animation that I have here and you can see how like all the animation is already done except on the tail so I'm just gonna apply it on the tail because it's the same principle that I used on the wings here so let's take a look at how we can do that fairly quickly now I'm not gonna be using these controllers because these tend to give us a softer control over the tail so I'm just gonna be using these individual controllers here and at the base, you can see here, we have these controllers down here. And you're more than welcome to use these little microcontrollers. He has like other feathers that are smaller, but I'm not going to pay attention to that because, you know, it's like I said, once you know how to do this, you can add, you know, whatever controllers you want onto your layer. So I created a selection set that selects these controllers here and the base. And if I move these around, you can see how they control the tail feathers each individually right so i went in here and like select that this that one this one so each one so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to add these into an animation layer so make sure you're not in display you go into animation and we select this the create layer from selected and then i'm going to throw these in this uh this awesome layer Oh, I can't even type it. Like, what? I can't name it awesome layer. Oh, I know. Underscore awesome layer. It has to be underscore awesome layer. Okay, now that we have these controllers in there, and if you're not sure if they're in there, when you select them, you have to see this little green dot here. That means that those controllers are in there. And you can see we also have a red one, which means they are also on the base animation. And I already have a, a layer here that I created. This is for the wings, so we're not going to focus on that. We're going to focus on the tail. So next thing we need to do is I'm going to go to a section where there isn't much animation. So here where the feathers or the wings are fully extended, there's less motion happening. So I can focus more on the tail. So I'm just going to say like frame 60. And then I'm going to set a key on frame 60. And then I'm going to go two frames over, set another key, press S, and another two frames over, and hit S. So now we have three keyframes. And this is going to be all we're going to need to do in order to create that motion. So we're going to have a neutral pose, and then we're going to have an up pose, and then again a neutral pose. So if we go to the middle keyframe, we can bring in the graph editor, which somewhere over here in my 20 monitors that I have going on. Uh, let's look at which direction we need to rotate this. So obviously, I mean, you can add any direction that you want here. 
that's up to you, but I'm just going to focus on one axis and that's going to be the rotate Z. And again, you can tell that by uh, rotating this this way. And then you can see here the values change on what axis you need to be focusing on. So now that we have this and I have my awesome layer selected here, I'm going to be focusing only on rotate Z. So you can see we have another axis here, maybe other overlapping here. But if I just come in here and select the rotate Z, that's going to isolate what I show in my graph editor. And to do that, you right click and say sync selection in graph editor. That way, whenever I select a certain axis, you see how that only isolates to that selection. So I'm just going to focus on the rotate Z. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. And again, go to the middle keyframe. And I like to make sure that I have this constraint on the up and down because it Normally the graph editor has it like this, which means you can select the key and move it any direction. Now I don't want to offset my key, so I like to just click on this until you get the, the vertical uh, constraint, which means it makes it harder for you to go left and right. So you can only move it up and down. So sometimes you can move left and right, but this is just better to constrain it in the, in the value direction. So now I'm going to look in here and I'm going to see, I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Now you can move this either positive or negative. It doesn't really matter. Uh, in this case, because I have other feathers, it might be, I'm just going to go down. So the feathers are going down, but the value is a positive one. So let's just go, I don't know, I'm just going to guess here, a value of around five. So you can be more precise and go five. Let's just say six. I'm going to show you how to tone this down afterwards. Let's say you went too big on the value and you want to fix this later after you offset and did all kinds of crazy stuff. Then I'm going to show you how you can modify that easily. So that's it. We have our value here. Now we only have one keyframe. So you're going to see the feathers go down, right? Now we need to duplicate this, but you know, it's not going to be, uh, easy to do if, if I come in here, copy this and paste them all throughout the timeline, that's just going to be too time consuming. So the easiest way is to cycle these to do a loop. And in order to do that is two ways. There's already a shortcut button for it. So you can loop this from the negative, starting from that keyframe going negative or here on the positive side. So I'm going to select this, the pre infinity, pre meaning before, right? And then if I go to the post infinity, it's going to be after the key. So now you can see how this is cycling on and off. And if you don't see the curves on the pre and post, you can go into view and make sure that you have this infinity checked on. See that's off and here it is view checked on. So now we see that. And then if I come in here and scrub past the keyframes, you notice that the tail continues to move up and down, right? So now if I just click play, we can see that action happening back and forth, which again, it might be a little too much, but I'll show you how to fix that afterwards. So now the next thing that we need to focus on is they're moving together, right? And in nature, when the wind goes over the feathers, they're all going to be random and there's like turbulence happening. So let's look at how we can easily offset this. So I'm going to switch my graph editor into the dope sheet because I think it's dope. A lot of you guys know I like using the dope sheet, but the dope sheet shows us all of the keys that we have on what controllers we have selected. So. I wish there was an easier way just to isolate what I have in this awesome layer here. Like if you click on it, it shows you all of the keys. I wish there was a way that I can just select the awesome layer and it just shows me these three keys that we just set right now. But again, for now, I guess it doesn't matter. So what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to select every other feather. So I'm going to skip to and then go to the other feathers just jump around just to make sure that every other feather is offset from the next one. Oh, not this one, but this one. Uh, two, two, just double check. Okay, it looks good. And then the shortcut key in Maya 2020. Now it's not a big deal. You can just do shift zero 
to go to the right or shift 9 to go to the left by one frame which is pretty cool and this works if you're in the graph editor and you're selecting keys and you can also shift them over or you can also do it in the time range down here or again you can middle mouse click and drag these when you have the move tool selected and that's just a really nice feature to be able to offset by doing a shortcut key in Maya 2020. And now if I click play, they're, they look a little more random. Now again, they are moving a lot. So uh, again, we're going to take a look at that at the end. But that is how you can create this little random noise on the feather. So very easy, very quick. And it does loop properly. You can see if you go to the first frame and the last frame, it's still looping properly because we have uh, the same timing on all of the feathers. So if you went in there and you made some feathers slightly uh, longer in timing, say, you know, instead of two frames apart, you did three frames apart, it's not going to necessarily loop because it's not the same timing. So just make sure that they all have the same offset on here. Okay, now that we have that, uh, I can focus on the value of how much uh, this is being animated. So if you think this is too much, right, compared to the wing feathers, you can easily come in here into the weight of the layer. So right now it's set to 100%. So you can come in here and tone it down. So if I go all the way to zero, that's 0% 0 weight on that layer. So you can see we're back to zero. And if I come in here and I start bringing this up, Think of this more as percentage. So that's, you know, in the 20%. So it's 26% or whatever. So if you want to go 50%, you would go 0.5. And then take a look at this. And that probably looks a little bit better. And that is how you would add that little fluttering effect on the feathers. Now you can come in here and offset now the value for each feather would be separate. So the last thing you want to do is because they all have the same, oh, well, this looks confusing. So just click on that awesome layer. And then now we go and we find that keyframe. So there it is. So they still have some sort of a feel that they're all moving at the same, uh, it's kind of weird to, they're not moving together, but they have the same value, right? So you want to have some that move a, a greater range than other ones. So now what we can do in here is come in there and start messing with the value for certain feathers. Now this is completely random. So you can make some feathers that, you know, move more. So you can take a look here, which feather that is. So you can say, I want that one to move more. And again, this is completely random. I don't know what feather is which, but you just come in here and you start tweaking this. And then you just, just start offsetting some of these so they don't have the same values. And then this will give us more of the uh, that offset or more randomization, I should say. So again, it doesn't really matter what what feather it is. It's kind of hard here, so you can just zoom in. And then you just keep going with this until most of them are kind of done. Again, it doesn't matter, just... You can say here, if you have the new Maya 2020, to not select the curve. That way you don't you no longer select the curve. That should make it a little bit easier. Uh, where did I go to six? All right, so we're done with that. All right, and now we click play. Again, we made some a little higher in value, so I can close the graph editor. I can tone this down a little bit. And now we have more of this random, maybe point somewhere in the point two. And that is how I created that little effect. So pretty simple, uh, just three keyframes. You wanna offset them and then play around with the range of motion. So that's it if you found this tutorial um, useful make sure you you like comment and subscribe and that'll let me know that you like this content and remember hit the bell notification because the early bird catches the early worm